So we go to a worldview, okay? Our eye and the world, how do we see things? And I am going to talk about paradigms and methodological approaches. And let's say that there are these two big paradigms. Some authors would write three. They would write positivism, post-positivism, and interpretivism. I'm going to leave it at two because post-positivism develops from positivism. You know, the post, you know, says that. And then interpretivism. And then we have the methodological approaches bunched in these two big uh, categories, you know, we human beings, we categorize to understand the world. That's something we do all the time. Quantitative and qualitative, and they roughly go together. So positivism and post-positivism roughly go with quantitative, usually, and interpretivism with qualitative. And this seems like a really simplistic thing, but actually it is a very powerful thing. Because when you go into a research presentation, when you go in, when you read an article, you know, many times we look at, you know, how is validity, how is reliability, how is this, how is that. Well, go back and say, does the concept of validity apply to this kind of research? So this is what I'm trying to move you along here. So from now on, I'm going to divide this world and I'm going to describe to you these two sides quantitative and qualitative. So I'm not going to write all the time quantitative and qualitative. You just know that this side is going to be quantitative, that side is going to be qualitative. So let's talk a little bit here about, if it moves, reality. Okay? Reality. Well, reality is reality. It's what's out there. Well, reality is out there. It's one reality. It's independent of the observer in quantitative methods in a positivist or a post-positivist view of the world. This is the ontology of that side, that there is one single reality, it's independent from the observer, and it's out there. And this may seem to you like, I can even imagine what the alternative is to this, and, but let me tell you, this is, I would say, the fundamental difference between the two approaches, the fundamental difference. Because on the other side, realities are not out there. Realities are socially constructed. And there you're thinking, she is nuts. What is she talking about? Table, podium, Dr. Switzer, are you telling me they're not here? That this is socially constructed? They are here, we're all here. But it is socially constructed because right now I'm standing here and there's Dr. Switzer taping me on her flip. One of the most dangerous things that could happen to anyone. And there she is, and I'm looking at her from here. She's looking at me from there and from that little viewfinder thing. And you're all looking at me. And what is really the reality here? It is different for every one of us. That's what that side would say. This is socially constructed. The fact that I'm standing here, I'm talking, you're listening, I'm supposed to know everything supposed to have the answers to every question you ask. If I wasn't a guest speaker, if I was Dr. Switzer, I would have the power all the time to be asking you questions also. Well, that is a socially constructed reality. And that is sort of the focus of qualitative methodology, is that you can't really separate the observer from the observed. That every reality is like that. I'll give you another example. Dr. Switzer, she comes from LSU. I had to give a talk like this when I went to LSU because I actually was a job interviewee at LSU many years ago. And I stood in front, I was a PhD student, stood in front of this undergraduate, undergraduate, and they told me, explain to them about how is this thing that reality is, you know, relative to the person. And suddenly, you know, I had an inspiration and I thought, what's the name of the tiger? Mike. Mike. These people have their tiger in a cage under the stadium. Okay, we don't even have our Uga here. He only comes for the games. They have this tiger there. And I suddenly I said, what if the door opens and this tiger comes in? Mike comes in. And he just goes around here, jumps on top of you, licks you. Okay, and goes back there, 
stares at Karen Andrews straight in the eye for five seconds and then just leaves the room. And then I come and say, everyone, please ride the reality of the last five minutes. Well, only one person was lit. Only one person knows exactly how that feels. And so that is sort of the idea behind this. It's not that things don't exist. It's that the meanings we assign to them, we can't separate them from ourselves. And this is a huge, huge difference. 